The Nintendo GameCube released in November of 2001 in North America, and while not the runaway success of the sixth generation of consoles, there is no denying the importance this small powerful box had. The launch of the console was nothing short of stellar exclusive titles, as well as numerous third party titles. However, out of the gate from day one, the GameCube offered something that was not really being utilized much, 480p output. While Nintendo did put out component cables to plug into the digital AV port of the original launch DOL-001 models, they later removed it and found it more cost efficient to remove this port since the market really wasn't there for progressive scan capable TVs. Unfortunately, this also led to such a scarcity of component cables for the GameCube that buying these online will cost well over 200 bucks. Well, fast forward 17 years later, and the fine folks over at Eon Gaming have devised a solution to provide the most optimal output for the GameCube on modern displays. Enter the GC HD. This little device plugs into the back of the analog AV and digital AV ports of the DOL-001 model GameCube, and promises to provide lag-free gaming. So, just how much of a difference does this device make? Let's find out. Oh! <laughs> On paper, the GCHD is a GameCube enthusiast's dream come true, getting the highest resolution output with lag-free inputs. At first, the concept of going from 480i to 480p may not sound like much, especially in a day and age where 1080p and 4K are the new standards, but don't jump to that conclusion so quickly. In 2001, and for approximately four years or so, HDTVs weren't really a big thing. There was either tube TVs or ED TVs, also known as enhanced definition TVs. If you had an ED TV, then you had component inputs on the TV to provide progressive scan capabilities. This truly sharpened the image quality and colors outputting on the TV. This was somewhat similar to what the Dreamcast did back in 1999 with the VGA output. We're going to be showing numerous games that highlight the differences between 480i and 480p output, as well as showcasing the Game Boy Player and how that runs and looks. Upon plugging the GCHD in, I was really impressed already with the results. Firing up F-Zero GX as my first game, I immediately saw a significantly clearer image than that of composite 480i output. Running the game in progressive scan, the heads-up display was already much sharper, the colors more vibrant, and just an overall cleaner screen. Here's a comparison to show how it originally looked, as well as a side-by-side -side comparison. You can see some very noticeable differences here. Next up, 1080 Avalanche. Now here's a game that was completely overshadowed by another stellar snowboarding game that year, SSX3. While not as mind-blowing as SSX3, 1080 Avalanche was a great game in its own right and deserved a lot more attention than it got. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about how it looks in 40i and 40p. So let's look at a side-by-side -side comparison here. Again, you'll notice that the GCHD provides a much cleaner image here on the right hand side. Next up, SSX3. Well, I had to mention it, fact of the matter is, it still remains one of my top three games of all time. SSX3 was a masterpiece, both from a gameplay and a technical perspective. Visually though, SSX3 ran at 60 frames locked, and it looked awesome in 4DI. 
Thankfully though, EA Big, the team over at EA Canada, had put progressive scaling capabilities into the GameCube version. Luigi's Mansion, such an underrated launch day title. Sure, it was not a traditional Mario game, but Luigi's Mansion was an excellent game that was very clever and unique. This game was already a visual jaw-dropper back in 2001 and still holds up incredibly well 17 years later. And yes, while the remake is coming to the 3DS, the visuals are still better on the cube, especially with this device. Ah, Beautiful Joe, one of many Capcom games that we have yet to see remastered or better yet, revitalized. This was definitely one of the games I was interested in seeing in 480p, as cell shaded graphics definitely pop out more and were a little bit more future proof from a visual perspective. Check out the differences here from the power up menu. Pretty noticeable, huh? Let's check out some gameplay side by side. Time to go to work, guys. Nothing personal, but is it number one or number two? Here's a brief glimpse of a few more titles that I wanted to showcase.
As you can see, you can change some of the settings from the GCHD's device. You can actually just use any IR sensor remote, so your TV remote will work just fine. And if you point at the device, you can hit the menu button or the OK button, whichever it is on your TV remote, and you can customize the buttons to navigate it. From there, you'll see there's a variety of features, such as scan lines or line doubler. Um, you can push for 480p mode. Uh, RGB limited range, or you want to make sure that's probably off just so you can get the most color out of your display and to push it for 16 by 9 or you could keep it at 4 by 3. So it's really up to you. It's neat because it does provide you some extra setting control with this device to pertain to how you want it to display. Now, the big thing people are curious about as well is how the Game Boy Player looks. Well, first off, the Game Boy Player does indeed support progressive scan. However, like some GameCube games that support 480p, you will need to hold down the B button to be offered the option upon booting it up. The Game Boy Player definitely looks a bit sharper, but the important thing to realize is that you are able to finally play these games in the intended visual output. Let's check out a few more Game Boy games running on here. Are you noticing a trend here? While it's fairly obvious that 480p looks better than 480i, it's more impressive that Eon Gaming have made a device that truly provides the optimal output that was intended for Nintendo's machine. So what about the lag-free aspect of the device? When testing out Super Smash Bros. Melee, controls were 100% spot on. Granted, that goes for every game. However, the community is still immensely popular for Super Smash Bros. Melee and hardcore players will be more than happy to hear that the split-second reaction time happens the moment you're hitting those buttons and moving the stick on the controller, whether it be the WaveBird or a standard wired GameCube controller. So, here's the catch. The GCHD is $150, and that's still not exactly a cheap solution for playing your GameCube games in 480p on an HDTV. However, compared to the $220 or more for the official component cables for the GameCube, $150 starts to sound a little bit more reasonable. Thankfully, we've worked with the awesome people at Castlemania Games and are providing you guys, the viewers, with a promo code for the GCHD to get 10% off. Simply type in Gamers Extreme in the promo code section at checkout and save a few bucks. Maybe put it toward another GameCube game. Ultimately, the GCHD is an awesome device that actually breathes new life to a 17-year-old console. While you could play your GameCube games on a backwards compatible Wii running component cables, HDMI still provides a slightly more vibrant image quality. If you're a GameCube enthusiast and love playing your games on original hardware, this is a no-brainer and must-own. Well, that's our video guys. Thanks again for checking it out. Again, be sure to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. And as always, game on!